Hey everybody, back for part two of the Q&A answers. Um, next question came from Wet Movie one who's Brendan Mitchell uh, here on YouTube. I'm sure most of you guys who subscribe to me probably either subscribe to him or at least know who he is. Uh, Brendan's been a real big supporter of me you know, through the years. He did a video response for Easy Chewy last year, and uh, actually whenever he put up his Q&A video um, for me, let's say I went from about 400 subscribers up to 500. So for everyone who found me through Brendan, I'm glad to see you. And again, thanks, Brendan, for just being so supportive. Um, Brendan asked what got me into filmmaking. I can't really nail it down to one specific moment uh, where I was just like, you know, I got to be a filmmaker. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, it, it's kind of always been there. I mean, whenever my mother was an actress, um, so when I was growing up, like, you know, she was on television here and there plus you know did plays and things like that so there's always been it's always been acceptable in my household you know to do entertainment based things I mean it was never I know a lot of people get flack saying oh you're never gonna get anywhere doing that that was never the case where I grew up for both my mother and my father have been extremely supportive um, so whenever I decided to kinda you know I don't know it's like make that jump it was never you know it was never an issue they were always just pushing me to go for it um, we watched a whole lot of movies in my house. Um, my father did was like an electronics um, installer. Did satellite dish back in the old days, whenever it was like big, big satellite dishes. So we had that stuff, you know, in my house. We had a really nice entertainment center with surround sound. We had subscriptions to all the movie channels. So there were just movies in my house. It was you know accessible to me in a time uh, where I lived in small town Texas, and it wasn't there for everybody else. So part of that I guess is just kind of like just watching it and knowing it um, I think the DVD boom was a, a major thing for me DVD when it came out I guess was in 1997 uh, in 1999 when I was in college I got my first DVD player uh, with that it's like I just got really not only just watching movies but got super into special features and like listening to commentaries and things like that and really breaking down the process of how things were made which in turn you know I would go to the library and pick up books on filmmakers and those films and read up on it and just became a real um, lover of just cinema history. And I think all that, you know, combined together just kind of turned me into this is what I wanted to do. So it's been, you know, like I say, it's been more of a journey of finding out, you know, how to get there as opposed to this one direct moment where, like, man, I saw this movie. I knew that's exactly what I wanted to do. So um, that's pretty much it on that. He also asked... Um, how do you fund your projects? How do you raise the money to actually put out quality product? Um, I just had my camera and my Gabriel and shit. This made me laugh funnier than anywhere just because you said, I just had my camera and my Gabriel and shit. Um, kudos to you and Gabe. I think you guys make some really funny stuff. Um, it, you know, I, I watch your videos and like I say, I think there's a lot of people here that do, so I think you're definitely doing something right. Um, as far as how I fund my stuff, it, it kind of varies from project to project. I mean, I've been lucky enough to have been paid for some of my work, so sometimes I get a budget from whoever, you know, is making the video as far as, like, commercials or um, music videos and things like that. And on other projects, I do I do kind of fund it myself. When we made um, Easy Chewy, which is the video you did the response for, uh, we made that whole thing for, I think I spent about 200 bucks, and that's including, like, feeding everybody and doing everything. It was like, a, we did it all pretty much in one day and had, like, just bukus of you know food laid out but I just borrowed stuff I mean I you just kinda have to start just asking for favors where you can um, I'm a firm believer in not not going over the line like hey just give me your money and I'll I'll make a movie um, if there's anybody out there who wants to donate to one of my projects man I'm all for it but I as of right now like I see people using Kickstarter and doing PayPal accounts and I think that's great I mean I've tried to donate where I can to projects that I do believe in but at the same time, like I'm just not there yet as far as like asking people for their funds. Um, so I, pretty much for me, it's just a matter of like just working. I mean, like I I have a day job, so I will sometimes like just put in all the extra hours that you know will be allowed, and just kind of jump in and make extra cash, flip that into a project, whether it means buying more equipment or you know getting things that I need. Uh, I, that's what I've been doing the last couple of months is just working a whole lot to save for a project that I'm working on this summer. Um, my initial like investment, though, um, which is kind of a funny story, I had a couple of old uh, 19 pre-CBS Fender guitars, which means Fender guitars made before 1965 were made by a different company, and they're worth a little bit more money. I had a couple of those um, that I had bought whenever I played more music, and they just, you know, they just kind of sat, you know what I mean? Like I, I had them and I enjoyed them, but I, and I still have other stuff. And I was like, man, it's like 
if I got rid of this, I could kind of jump in and grab some things I need. So I sold that as well as a, um, a Gibson SG that I had, and I raised about four grand in a matter of a couple weeks, and in turn bought my camera, bought my computer, bought some just basic, just the basic stuff you need. I mean, the camera ate up the biggest chunk of it, but I was able to automatically just jump in. Um, but I will say, like, for people who don't have any kind of means, like, to do something like that, it's best to just get your hands on whatever you can use. Like, right now, I'm using this little flip camera. Get one of those for 100 bucks and just start making movies. I mean, I am a firm believer that you will hone your craft, especially if you have to use bad equipment. You will learn ways to make things better. So, you know, go for that. Um, he also asks, how do you get music for your short films without getting sued? Is there a website you can go to to get royalty-free music? I've just been really lucky. I live I live in Nashville, and I have a lot of friends who are musicians. So I've had people do music for nothing, just kind of make it for me. Uh, and and other times, you know, I have paid some uh, small licensing fees. I can't think of the website I use, but I know when we did like the Go Green with Dr. Gang Green PSAs, all the surf music that we use in that, I bought it all for like five bucks online, like thirty second and uh, one minute clips, and just kind of using and reused it and it basically gave you the license to use it for as long as you needed to. Um, I would say the best thing to do is just look for bands and look for musicians who are looking to get stuff out there and just work out deals with them. I mean, people use Craigslist, things like that. I mean, anybody you know. I mean, here on YouTube, I'm sure if you you know if you put out a call for music, you will find people who want to get it out there. Some of it's going to be good, some of it's going to be bad. You just kind of have to use your own judgment to figure out you know what you want to do and what fits your project. Um, Again, I don't have a specific website, but I, if anybody does, please leave a comment so you know Brendan can take a look at that. Um, let's see here. He also asks, as well as uh, Lev Nimkin one, uh, what is your favorite horror movie? What is your favorite movie of all time? And what is your favorite type of music? Brendan also asked at the end of his video what my favorite movie and my favorite type of music were. So starting with my favorite movie, um, I tell people all the time it's either the original King Kong or the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, and it really just kind of depends on which day of the week you catch me on. Uh, Good, the Bad, and the Ugly is a movie that no matter when it's on TV, I will stop and watch it at any point and just watch it till the end. Uh, King Kong is a movie that I've seen dozens and dozens of times, and I just love it. I think it's a just a perfect perfect movie from front to back. I think it's just it's heartfelt, but it's like a monster movie. It's got everything that I like about movies is in that movie. Um, let's see here. Uh, my favorite type of music. A lot of what I listen to is um, I listen to a lot of indie rock music. I listen to a lot of classic rock music. Um, but you know, I'm a lover of all the things. I, mean, I still I listen to rap music and bluegrass music. Whenever I first moved to Nashville, my first job here was actually working for a bluegrass label. Um, and so there's a little bit of everything, uh, you know, it's like, I know a lot of people have like, oh, I hate country music or I hate this. I can't think of too many kinds of music where I can't find something somewhere that I, I like about it. Um, I'm, it's kind of hard to like pick a favorite band. Some of the bands that, um, I listen to, I mean, Weezer was very seminal, um, for me growing up. I like bands like Radiohead, um, it, stuff like ACDC, Led Zeppelin, as far as in the classic rock tiff, um. See, there's so much good stuff out there. I could go for you know miles and minutes talking about that kind of stuff. Uh, what is your favorite horror movie? Again, if you consider King Kong a horror movie, I guess it's King Kong. Um, again, there's there's a long list of those. I really like all the old Universal classic monster stuff. Uh, I'm a big fan of both Creature from the Black Lagoon and The Wolfman. I think are both just uh, great, great movies. So I kind of would go down that road, I guess. Um, but I mean, there's been a lot of great stuff in recent years too. My my favorite recent horror movie is probably still The Signal, which I did a video on somewhere here in the last year or so and kind of gave my thoughts on that. Um, to end this one out, uh, Max's Zoom Dweeby, which is my buddy Joe Francis asked, what did you think of the Texas Frightmare Massacre? What part did you like the best and what part did you like the not best? Of course, this is the Texas Frightmare Massacre and yes, again, I am plugging for my good buddy Joe Francis. My last video was about this movie, so go check that out. I answer all his questions there. Um, I'm not exactly sure where I'm at on time here, so I'm going to go ahead and jump to part three and try to answer some more questions. I'll see you guys in just a minute.